My grandfather, he always said, hey, why do you treat me so bad? I used to babysit you every day. And I said, you didn't babysit me. You used to go play cards at the university bar and you, I used to have to happen to sit on your lap. I used to passively smoke 40 cigarettes a day, thanks to you, mate. <coughs> Ligon Street was, it was all the Italian cafes here. That's where the men discussed sport. Roberto Baggio, probably he'll probably be the top. A player called Charlie Villani, and he was the Italian stallion. Gina Lollobrigi that came once, I said, listen, I, I, no, honestly, I can't do it. I want to go to Olympic Park to have a game. Does anyone know who Gina Lollobrigi is? <laughs> 50 and 60 and even early 70. There was a lot of Italian coming in Australia. My dad said the only way when they all migrated there was two things, they'd go to work and go to the soccer on a Saturday and Sunday. Juventus to the community at the time was like a mother. All our days and nights were spent really at Adelaide City and that became our extended family. That's where I first bumped into my future wife. Berlin was my first and only club that I played for here in Australia. It was my second home. There's not a day that we don't talk about football with each other. There's not one single day. When my sister was born in 1966, did you really just drive past the hospital and wave to my mum and my, and, my, and, uh, and then go to Olympic Park for the UV well, game? Is that a true story or not? I was on the footpath going to Olympic Park. I said, well, should I go up to see her? the baby or should I go to Olympic Park? I just yelled to her and said, Clara, look, I'm going to Olympic Park, I come back. We recently celebrated 60 years of publication of the Global. We are around uh, together with the Italian community, of course, that's our reason to exist. In the years that when the internet was not available, we saw at that time that was nobody that reports the junior results. And we created that section, the junior room, that uh, was a huge, immediate success. Well, that was the only way back in the day, playing in any league, I think, to get the results of the, the games and points and ladders. And it was also nice to see your own name written in there, especially when we were younger. I think when you get older, the less you see your name written in the, in the newspaper, the better. I think the moments that I fulfilled my dream of playing in Italy was the day that I walked out onto San Siro next to Paolo Maldini as the captain of Parma. When Italy lost against Argentina in 1990, I actually cried that day. I actually didn't even want to go to school. So that just shows how much of an impact and how much passion we had growing up here in Australia, but with um, our Italian background. When we were watching Serie A, back then was Maradona, Platini, Gullet, then Bustin. The opportunity arose and I was only 19 to go play in the Serie A with Cremonese and my second game was at San Siro uh, against Inter Milan with uh, Roberto Carlos bombing down the left and you know, it, you, it was a, a surreal moment. Vince Grilla and, and, and Bresciano were playing at Parma and uh, where's the best uh, Parmigiano is from Parma. A camp in England, I asked one of the, the waitress in the hotel to bring me some Parmesan cheese. The young lady tried her best to bring something that uh, looked similar to Parmesan cheese and sitting next to my good friend Mark Bresciano, he said to me, why don't you stop complaining and bring your own Parmesan cheese? And I think he only mentioned it as a joke, and I thought, you know what, that's a good idea. We thought it was enough for us, but by the time everyone got their hands on it, it didn't last too long. I think that both my life and my career would never have been the same without the influence of soccer and without that Italian community vibe of the soccer. It was full of characters. I must say, Australia, if it wasn't for the migration, they wouldn't be where they are now. You know, concrete didn't exist in those days, basically, you know? In my life, and I guess also in my career, I find that, that people want stories. They want story. They, they love hearing a story. And these people didn't just tell stories, they were stories. It inspires you to want to either tell that story, relive that story, or tell your own stories. <laughs> <laughs>